What you are seeing right now is from the Panasonic Lumix S1. No, that is not more vodka, just lemonade. This was a camera that never really caught my attention or interested me. I was looking for a new hybrid system that suited my wants over the GH5. Don't get me wrong, the GH5 was one of my favorite cameras that I've ever used. Full frame has been on the forefront of everyone's minds, especially since the Canon R5, R6, and the A7S III have come out. I wasn't looking to drop a few thousand on a new camera system, but I wanted something reliable like my GH5. I started digging around and looking at different options on the market. I wanted something that ticked all of my boxes. Good battery life, in-body image stabilization, reliability, budget-friendly, 4K 60 frames per second, 10-bit, and full frame. The S1 checked all of these boxes, and it's in my hands now, and this camera is really something special. The S1 is packed with features, and I wanted to run you through lots of different video examples as well so you can see what this camera is capable of in different conditions and profiles. The dynamic range you can achieve through Panasonic's full vlog profile is astounding. Panasonic claims to have achieved 15 stops. Other sources say that it's around 12 and a half to 13 stops. Nevertheless, it looks amazing, and I really love Panasonic's color, especially when you shoot in 10-bit 422. When choosing a camera, I wasn't looking for anything with spectacular low light, but when full frame cameras come into the mix, the two usually go hand in hand. The S1 blew me away when it came to low light and noise performance. I come from a micro four thirds background and low light was never its forte. So the S1 was mind blowing when I first started shooting with it in low light. I can get away with shooting up to 16,000 ISO with a usable image, if not a bit higher. The noise floor on this camera is almost non-existent comparing it to the GH5. The 4K 60 frames per second is beautiful as well. Albeit it has an APS-C crop and it's only 8-bit, I wasn't a fan of this in theory, but after using it, it doesn't really bother me. 10-bit would have been nice, but there are rumored firmware updates in the near future. The 150 frames per second on this camera is pretty incredible too. The image is super clean and usable, and it uses the full frame sensor instead of cropping in. The full frame look is very unique and it's something I've always longed for. The subject isolation is pretty amazing and you're able to make spaces and objects look much cleaner and beautiful. I look forward to highlighting this camera more as this channel continues on. If you'd like to see more stuff like this, please like and subscribe, and please comment what you would like to see more of. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.